Hi everybody, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. So today's video, we are going to be stripping some of this engine down. So today's video, I want to accomplish a few things. One, I'm gonna remove the valve covers and get the valve train out. So just basically the push rods, the rocker arms, take them out because ultimately I want to clean the engine up. And the best way to do that is to preferably have the valves closed. So if I douche it, get anything in there, don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna throw these spark plugs back in so I can seal that up. And then I gotta relocate this. I'm gonna take this uh, sandwich plate adapter out because we got some electronics we don't wanna get jacked up. And then I'm gonna put this filter back in just so it's all sealed up. Then after that, I'm gonna work on getting this harmonic balancer off. Now this thing looks pretty booty cheeks, so I'm probably going to end up replacing it. I don't know if I'm going to go back to stock or get a 10%. I really don't want to go with 25% because I heard that fucks up your alternator and some of that stuff. So a minimum 10% I'll go if I change this out. But like I said, this thing's pretty booty cheeks. Probably going to end up going. Also, I want to get this little, I think they call it a steam line. I want to get this thing out of the way too because once I get all that stuff taken care of and I douche the engine with this engine degreaser. So let's get at it. We'll get these things off. I'll tell you the sizes and all that stuff. And uh, we'll kind of play it by ear, but I think that's as far as I'm going to go with this video. What the fuck? I got a tag murdering my neck. It's itchy as fuck. Yeah, let's, uh, let's start tackling this and see how far we get. All right, to remove these valve covers on this specific engine, Eight millimeter socket, kind of already broken free. So we'll start busting these out and we'll fight the valve cover off, which it's been on for 20 years. It's never been off, so it may be a little bit of a bitch. So let's check this out real quick. See how long these are. These are probably pretty long. They're going all the way down to the head. Okay, so that's what this little guy looks like. A little flat washer. A little oddly shaped little bushing and I'm assuming this is a little stop so you don't freaking go nuts. I'll take the rest of them off and uh, see if this thing comes off pretty easy. All right guys got two of the four removed. Uh, these two chose violence so uh, so I'm gonna leave these here because I got new valve covers. Uh, I'm just gonna hang on to these just in case I need something. I'm going to put them back on for when I clean the engines just so nothing gets inside. And I plan on reusing these heads for a future project. So let's see how this thing... Oh shit, it came right off. Alrighty, cool. Alright, here's inside. Nothing crazy. Inside of here. I'll do the other side real quick and uh, then we'll start getting these little bastards out. Looks like there's... I don't see anything shiny going on in there so it looks like the... Oil changes and all that stuff have done their jobs. All right, let me get the other side off and then we'll start tackling this, see what size these little bastards are. All right, so these rocker arms are an eight millimeter. Let me tackle that and then get back to you. Okay guys, so the eight millimeter socket is on. I just went ahead and broke these free. I guess depending on where the valve is sitting, it's different tensions to get them off, so. Back this guy out and we'll see what we got. See how long these little bolts are. Okay, so we got a rocker arm off. Doesn't look like the needle bar bearing exploded, so that's good. I believe my new kit comes with new bolts and hardware, but I'm going to keep these just in case. So I'm going to stick that there. Got our push rod. Yay. And that's out. Uh, I'm going to leave the valves in for now. If I do decide, well, I'm probably going to get these decked and redone, but till that time, just going to leave them in for now. I'll probably change this. Like if I get these heads redone, I'm going to replace the springs, the little valve retainers. I'm going to do all that stuff. So it's a more robust system because these may be going in my Jeep. We knock out the rest of these. We'll get this out, see what it looks like. And I'm assuming that this, yeah, this whole bar moves. So this whole bar comes out. So, awesome. Let me get the rest of these little shits off and see what it looks like. All right guys, got all the uh, little push rods and the rocker arms out and this is what it looks like. Now this little bar seems to just come out. 
I'm not sure if you have to reuse this, but I'm gonna hang on to it just in case, cause I'm pretty sure that the new rocker arms need something to sit on. They just don't float willy nilly. Either keep this, get new ones, I don't know. We'll play it by ear. And uh, just a correction on what I said at the beginning of the video. I thought I'd be able to get the lifters out, but I forgot that they're buried in there. You have to take the head off to get to that. So that's gonna come later on. But come over to this side. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Break these pieces of shits loose with the eight millimeter socket. Get the push rods out, the wire arms out, and this bracket, and continue on from there. All right, got this side all taken care of. The rockers and the push rods are temporarily, permanently in these bags because I don't see a use for them again. So just put this little bracket back in just to keep it safe for now. And we will go on to removing this little steam pipe because eventually that's going to come off with the head. So I'm going to do my wrench. I had a wrench, there it is. So to take these turds off you need a 10 millimeter deep socket because threads and let's break this free. That was easy. Didn't seem too tight. Take this off. So hopefully this thing's a son of a bitch to come off. Comes off like that. Okay, so that's the way it comes off. I thought it was just gonna be a little nut. Okay, both of them are out. And be gentle here, just give it a little couple rocks. And we're free. That's what it looks like. So I guess you got a little little line there, it goes across to this little line, which goes to this one, which is getting deleted. And that's it for our little steam pipes. Yay! All right guys, real quick with the steam line. I just noticed that there is a little gasket looking thing here. So yeah, make sure you get that off. Especially if you want to reuse it. I'm gonna see if I can find new ones because why would I use some old crap and ruin an engine job. So just temporarily, let's clean this off real quick and just stick you back home there. Oh, get on there. All right, so I got my little gaskets back. So I'm gonna stick that in a Ziploc bag so I don't lose it. I'll try and clean this thing up the best I can so it looks shiny and new when we put it all back together. And let's carry on to something else on here. All right, so next I think I'm just gonna take these off. I believe these were 15 millimeter sockets. Let me figure that out for you. Yeah, I'm just gonna take these motor mounts off real quick so we could get Better access to cleaning this thing. These are just 13 millimeter sockets. Looks like there's one, two, and three. Yep, 13. And then the other sides, you got three as well. You got one underneath, one there, one there. So let me bang that out real quick and we'll move on to something else. All right, got this motor mount off. Nothing crazy, just put the three bolts back. Did the same thing on the other side. Now on this driver's side of the engine, you need a little Swivel socket to get that little bastard because it's because it's kind of tight in there. So I mean, come in through the side with a wrench if you don't have power tools, but no big deal. All right, now I'm gonna work on getting this drained out because I'm pretty sure there's something else in there. So like I said, I want to take this off, drain it, get the sandwich plate adapter off just so I could save the electronics, and put the filter back in so I could degrease this whole thing because it's. Uh, it's a little cruddy. Yeah, I want to cover these up and uh, you know make sure no fluids get in there. I'm going to leave this on temporarily because there is a seal in there and I want to utilize that as long as I can. So real quick, take this off and I'll explain how this goes on. This is for a uh, oil pressure sensor. And I said I want to try and move it somewhere else because the sandwich plate adapter gets in the way of the skid plate. So maybe inspect over here. See if I can get it in one of these holes because that looks like it goes into the oil pan. So I'll explain that and then thinking about getting an oil cooler which would go here. So I'm still up in the air on that. That thing's $700. Is it worth it for what I want to do with it? It probably will be. You know doing road racing and circle track or not circle track but you know you get it road courses and stuff and just regular abusive street driving. So let me get this Drained, I'll show you how this goes in, and we'll get this thing off. 
All right, guys, so as you can see, you got this little nut here, I broke it loose, but that's basically what keeps this thing against here. It screws into where the oil filter goes and just basically makes that an extension for the sandwich plate adapter. So I'm gonna loosen this, hang on to this because I need two hands for that because I don't want to drop this in here into the oil. And then once I get that off, throw the oil filter back on and start spraying this thing. So let's see if I can do this, get you off. Probably gonna be some oil in there. Okay, so as you can see, that just goes over where the oil filter would go. There it goes. Okay, so yeah. You got your hole there, you can shove this up in. Actually, the other way around. So this would go up inside, like your mom, and screw on to where the oil filter goes. So let me put this here for now. Just temporarily throw this back on. Okay, got that. So as you can see, kind of there, this filter is now flush with the bottom of the oil pan. And that's where the issues with the skid plate come in. Yeah, so it drops it down like another inch, as you can see by the diameter of this thing. So I'm gonna try not to reuse that. And I'm wondering if I could get something to where I could get a little splitter up here. I believe this is the oil pressure sensor. I gotta do a little research into it, but there's a way that I could kind of get like a splitter for it where I keep the one for the engine control module, add that one for my gauge, being that this car does not have one for a gauge. So I'm gonna, whatever company my gauges are from, I think it was True Glow, Street Glow, one of them. Anyway, I'm gonna see, uh, I know they have a whole bunch of adapters and kits. I'll, I'll just have to call them. I tried finding it online and it seemed uh, pretty futile trying to find it myself. So if I give them a call, I'll probably figure it out. All right guys, just got in from uh, giving this thing a bath. It looks much better than it did, but you know, it's still got some little spots there. We'll clean it up a little further when uh, it goes back together. Let's try and get this motherfucker off. 24 millimeter socket on here and oops, going away. And try and break this free. Now this thing's torqued down like freaking crazy, so we'll see how this goes. I don't know if this will get it. All right, time to resort to violence. All right, I put a crowbar in there. Let's see if we can uh, get this to go. Oh, we got movement. Yeah, there we go. Okay, there, got that going. Got it. And there's our piece of shit bolt. Yay, we did it. Uh, just real quick guys, one thing I forgot to mention. You cannot reuse these allegedly. So if you take it off, get a new one. It's for the harmonic balancer. So that's what I hear, that's what the internet tells me. That's what mechanics tell me. So yeet, don't need that no more. I got a new one anyway, so we'll continue on. All right guys, now we're gonna start trying to take this harmonic balancer off. I bought a puller for it, but it didn't seem to work. So I went to Amazon and got one of these LS engine pullers. So we're gonna see how this doohickey does. And we'll slap that in. I'm gonna spray a little, little schmutz on it and see if that helps us break it free. Squirt, 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 squirt. Squirt, 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 squirt. Hopefully that works. All right, so apparently you stick this thing in and you give it a twist. So I'll try and center this up like so. Okay, it looks centered. And yeah, it looks like the little tabs go here. I figured they would go on the flat spot there. I can't really get in there, but I figured they'd go on the flat spot there, but they don't seem to reach. We'll give it a go. Hopefully this thing doesn't explode and uh, no any issues. All right guys, this thing's a 24 millimeter too, so I don't know if you got this tool, but we'll see if uh, this thing's up to the task. Like I said, there's like little flat spots on it. Looks like it's supposed to go on there, but it won't reach. So here's hoping the tabs don't blow apart. Yeah, that worked better than I thought it would. 
All right, cool. Save this, save this for a future project. All right, guys, that about does it for this video. Uh, keeping them short and simple. Uh, next video, I want to get the front cover taken off. I want to get the heads off. I want to get the lifters taken out, the timing chain out, cam out, and go from there. We'll see uh, how far we got. And uh, I just want to ask you guys if you have any input on this. Uh, I brought it up briefly uh, earlier in the video, but here, I want to get the oil cooler from Mishimoto. Now it hooks up to here and goes to the front of the car. I uh, just wanted to get your input on that. If any of you have done it, does it really help? Is it worth the 700 and something dollars that it's worth? And is it easy to put in? You know, getting the one with the thermostat on it. Uh, some other things I wanted to go over. On my clutch, I got this little burn spot. It looks like a little hot spot. And it doesn't feel like there's any deviation in it. Is that an issue? And if so, let me know if it is. Because if it is, I'll swap it out. Uh, I've never really had that issue on a clutch before, or at least on a flywheel. Uh, so yeah, let me know about that. And also, on the transmission for the slave cylinder, are there any more like upgraded ones? Like this is a GM stock one. It was like 200 something dollars. It crapped out on my last one. Let me know if there's any like upgrades for this because I really want to beef this up. Like, apparently the stock one's good for a little bit. While it's out, I really want to upgrade it. I really want to change the transmission, but that's a couple thousand dollars. And I don't know if I want to go that route yet. Because I still want to do the rear. I want to get bigger brakes. That's later down the road in the future. I got to see how much overtime I work, see how much money I can squirrel away. Yeah, so that does it for this video. If you got any uh, suggestions for what I just mentioned, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Boom.